Um, we can redo this again. Okay. I really like how you kind of make me keep doing this, Kanji. So, yeah, that, that's um, how you learn. I, I was like, this is, <laughs> at least I, I think it works. This is, this is my invention. By now, <laughs> I, I like it. Because yeah, by like, now, I think I've learned three characters, three kanji in, in one, because I've learned I've learned this character, kanji, and then I learned the ki, and then I learned the tana, and the leg thing, and the move, <laughs> and then the oni on top of that. So it's it's a good way of learning. Yes, I really like it. Yeah. <laughs> Great invention. Um, okay, so. What does this word mean? Do you know? This means things. Yep. Specifically, things. con is it concrete things like yeah. tangible things? Yes, that that sounds correct. As opposed correct. to the to the koto, mm. which is like things thing. for events. You're right. The types of things. Sona koto. That's true. Mono. Hi. Like a so, Pokemon is a mono. Yes, that's correct. Um, people are not that kind of mono. People have their own mono, which is this mono. So if you're talking about human beings, you can also say mono, but it has a different kanji. Okay. Um, but anyway, we're learning right now the verb kese, which is to make something disappear. And I just wanted to say, um, kieru is the version of the subject disappearing, which is in the title of this book. This, this book is called Maho ga Kieteiku which is the magic is disappearing. The magic is disappearing away from me. So I just thought to point that out, but you're not being taught this right now. But I thought, hey, did you know this is in the title? But yeah, kesu means I kesu something. I make something disappear. Um, so how do you think you would say, I will make a thing disappear? Ore, mono, kesu. Ore wa mono o kesu. Perfect. I will make a thing disappear. Perfect. Um, do you know what this is? This is me, as in the I character. Perfect. So our next grammar is kara. Specifically, um, we're talking about the kata that means because. This kata does not occur after nouns, it occurs after clauses. So for example, dorobo is a noun. So it's not dorobo kara, it's dorobo da kara. That's where that da comes mm. from. Because that's marking this is as a clause and not a sentence. So dorobo kara is a totally different thing than dorobo da kara. Very important points. Super Understood. Important. <laughs> so this is basically used to mean because. Can you do me a favor and read the sentence for me? This is kanwa dorobo da kara majutsu shi. I'm having a hard time saying that word. Majutsu shi to nite iru. So So I would start oh, with this. Okay. Con so, wa dorobo. What does that part mean? Con is a thief. Correct. So in English. Because con is a thief. Yep, exactly. <laughs> okay. So because con is a thief, he and the magician looks alike. Exactly. Perfect. Yep. Um, I wonder why this book. Okay, so the book started out with this notion that thief, thievery, and magic somehow are, are similar. similar. Exactly. That is our next line, and it's a very complex line, grammar-wise. <laughs> it has a lot of little pieces in it, um, but it's a fun sentence, I think. So, how do you think you would say, "Because I'm a thief, I make stuff disappear," and by stuff, I mean mono. So we got ore, which is I, suri, which is thief, and kesu, which is to make something disappear. Ore wa dorobo da kara mono o kesu. 
close. So I wanted because... to do, wait, you're right. <laughs> Perfect. You did 100% right. I meant to write be right because I'm a pickpocket, <laughs> but I did not write that. Wait, wait, you're correct. It's a, I make stuff disappear. Mm, I think you said mono kesu. I, mono kesu. Yeah, I think that's the connotation. I make stuff disappear. Mo mono means to make something disappear. Uh, it also means to make something to be erased. So erasing something and making something disappear is the same word in Japanese. Um, so you could theoretically, if you wanted to say I'm going to kill somebody, you could use kesu in that kind of context, metaphorically, to make them disappear. Moni, have you ever heard of a like a YouTube channel or something? I forgot what the Japanese learning channel was, but one time I heard the person say that basically all the verbs come from the two parent verb, which are suru and the other is aru. These are the two, from what I've heard, these are the two primordial verbs. And from these two verbs, all the other verbs kind of come out of them. Oh. So I think thing that have the sound suit or or closer to the to the the suit or either this root right here is gonna be an other acting verb. It's gonna act on the other object. Mm. Whereas verb that have this ah sound, that's why I kind of thinking like this ah. I think like hot. Yeah. I don't know about how to make them, but this is what I've heard. I it might it might be useful. It might be not. But I'm just kind of remembering about that. Right you now. can definitely see if it works. We got um ugoku and um ugokasu. Um ugoku, I guess in that context would be this the audio. The doesn't really work because ugoku means I move. Ugokasu means something else ugoku. moves. I see. So it's no, it doesn't work. The opposite it of might that even case. Work. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I feel like yeah. uh, I I feel like I remember learning about transitive and transitive mm -hmm. verbs in class, and it was kind of um, very uh, was decided. You just kind of have to learn it as you go. Because <laughs> yes, yes, yes. um, sometimes it flips, right? Sometimes the exactly. Sometimes it flips. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know what this word is? Oops. My meaning the in front of. Perfect. In so now, of. yep. So our next grammar is no, which basically is used when we want to describe nouns with other nouns. What does this mean? Ore no me. This means ore no me, my eye. Perfect, my eye. So how would you say my hand in Japanese? Ore no te. Perfect. Ori no te. Nice. No te. Oops. So you pronounce it more of a t sound. I'm probably not I pronouncing it, it right. Th no, I, I think I heard a lot of people pronounce it t t too. I don't. I don't know because I'm probably doing an English T, and I know T in, e in English has a very aggressive p sound to it. Mm -hmm. So that's that's probably my American accent <laughs> sounding like America. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't use me as the best <laughs> marker. <laughs> Who knows? Um, so, men no mai is in front of my eyes. Yes. And this is a lot of times used when we're talking about something you can see. Men no mai, right before my eyes, is kind of how we say this in English. You would add the word right to this. Right before my eyes, I saw blink happen. Men no mai. Ah. Uh. So that's the difference between this ma e and this, was it saki or seki? Mm, saki. It's further in front, like all the way up, further in the, in the ahead, kind of. beyond. Yeah, saki is a weird word because it has, it can refer to past items and future items depending on context. Because it, it can insinuate talking about a destiny. Or you can say like saki is in like something that happened earlier today. So saki is a hard word because of that for us learning Japanese, <laughs> which oh. meaning it means. Uh, but a lot of times it, it will be used for like in front 
of things. Um, my is very much dependent on something as a benchmarker. And my is also used for time as well. But like Saki can be used on its own. You can just say Saki and you can have a connotation of it being front or back. My, as I said, you kind of need to have something else as a thing with it. In front of what? Mm. Um, so, men no mai no mono is things that are right before your eyes. Men no mai no mono. So, a lot of no's right there. How many times can they go? Can um, this no go on? Forever. Forever. However, you probably won't see it go forever because no one really talks like that. It's kind of like um, we do do the same thing in English with like and. I could say I went to the park and then I went to the beach and then I went to the store and then I went to the blah, blah, blah. All sentences, it is theoretically possible to continue them forever as long as you keep it grammatically correct. But no one's actually going to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so no, it's just like that. You can literally just Makes add things forever and ever and ever and ever. Um, but luckily you're not going to see that i would say um two no's is normally your max um men no mai is almost an idiom so that that's why that's more okay i would say so like so normally you'll only see two and very rarely you'll see three i feel like i've never seen four but it would be grammatically correct if you did four but like so maybe you're talking right. to a kid, they might say it. it's like you never have you ever heard that thing in English would say, so Sam told blank that blank the blank, where they have like five thousand <laughs> names going on. Exact same thing. So there's probably some joke like that in Japanese as well. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. So before we do this, she in Japanese, this right here is a way to say and and it's used when you're listing examples. So it's and for example. So this is a really interesting thing about Japanese is that I believe they have about four or five different ways to say and. English, we kind of just have and, but, and or. And okay. those, those are the things we have. Japanese, though, they have different ones depending on what you want to insinuate. So with she, you're insinuate, I am listing an example of something. So the context, mm -hmm. this is the she, is listing examples of how um, things are sim how thieves, this is our last sentence, thieves and magicians are similar, right? That was our last sentence. So the she is listing an example for the previous sentence. It can also list examples for the next sentence. So that's like a context thing. It doesn't have to be the previous sentence. It could be the next sentence. Um, but I know it's the previous sentence because I've read this. <laughs> mm. So I let's see. so let's go read the sentence. What does this say? It say ore wa suri da kara te o subayaku ugokas su shi me no mae no mono o kesu because I am a thief. I quickly make things disappear. So subaku, subayaku is modifying subayaku. one of these verbs, which you, this is subayaku, swiftly. Do you think it's modifying the verb it's right next to, ugoku, or the verb really far away, kesu? See, that's a good question. <laughs> so this you is mentioned... A, that it could be in any other position. It could be in the A, yes. B, or the C position. That is true. However, and so in this case, uh -huh. yes. So there's a certain thing in languages that are kind of called clause boundaries, since you know what a clause is. Basically, every single clause is its own like sentence, basically. And you're not really allowed to move things outside of their clause without making people confused. So this is a clause, and this is a clause, and this is a clause. So this sentence has three different clauses. And the things going on in these clauses 
only affect the things inside of their class. So Subayaku cannot modify Sudi or Kesit because they're in different clauses. So swiftly I see. is the Ugokasu, which means okay. I can swiftly move my hands. My hands are mo will be moved swiftly. And I can what else? make things disappear. Yes, in front exactly. of my eyes, right in front of my eyes, I can make things disappear. Yes. Okay. So can will be inside our main sentence that we will be seeing. Currently, we have not learned the grammar for can. So this is actually just in future tense. So literally, it's saying because I'm a thief, I will move my hand swiftly and I will make things disappear. Is what this is literally saying. However, mm. our target sentence will have can in it. Um, it's just we haven't gone to that grammar yet because it's a gra so unlike in English where can is a word, can in Japanese is a grammar point. It's a way. It's like ing. If you want to add can, you have to add ing. So, which is but, literally our next slide potential. It is possible. Money, but also yeah. though the sentence before that you showed me, it could also mean because I'm a thief. I have a habit or I'm in a habit yes. of making things disappear and move my hand quickly. True. That is 100% true. It could definitely mean that. Um, I habitually do these things. These exactly. are the things that I do. Yep. That frequently. is definitely what it could mean. That's probably more likely what it would mean. Um, hi. So potential form is what this is officially called, but this is the same as adding can in front of a verb in English. Potential form is probably the easiest grammar, uh, I mean, conjugation in Japanese, because it's the same, I believe, whether or not, no matter what verb you have. So a lot of conjugation in Japanese, there'll be two types of conjugation depending on the verb, like which category the verb is. So if you learn with Mina no Ihango, you'll have verb one and verb two. Or if you learn with Genki, it'll be u verbs or do verbs. Um, I learned with Genki, so you will hear me saying verbs with the word do and verbs with the name u. Nidu, for example, is a do verb. Any guesses where that name might have come from? It come from the root. Yeah, it ends with do. Um, there is a slight, so interesting thing in Japanese, about 60%, mm, that's actually too big of a number, I'd say, I'll do 70. 70% 70 of verbs that end with do are do verbs. And then 30% of verbs are actually ending with R plus U, <laughs> which would make it an U verb. That is a complicated thing about Japanese. However, ugokasu, any guess what category it might be? Do you think it's an U verb or a do verb? Ugokasu is an U verb. Exactly. It is an U verb. Perfect. Anyway. The way how potential form is made is that you're ending an e sound to the end of the verb. So ni do is r plus e, r plus do, do. So you delete that u, you add that e, and you make de. So ni de do, to be able to look similar. So how would you say to be able to move something? Ah, uh, so it's. Perfect. Ugokaseru. To be able to move something. Exactly. Um, can you do me a favor and read the sentence for me? Dorobo wa me no mae no mono o kaseru. Or I'm sorry. Keseru. Nice. Do you have any idea what that might mean? The thief uh, able to make the, the things disappear right in front of his eyes. Exactly. Perfect. Hi. So altogether, how would you say the magicians can move their magical stones? The magician can move the magician. So, oh, I know. Yep. She, wa. Move their magicians. Okay. Maho Jutsu Shiva. Um, 
まどせきをはいけせるおのむあうごかせる Perfect. Yep. Yep. A weird sentence, but good for practicing. Hi, hi, hi. The magician can move the magic stone. Yep. Okay. Okay. Now let's go read this sentence then. The sentence is. One second. So it's are wa suri da kara. Te o subayaku ugo kaseru shi me no mae no mono o keseru. Perfect. Because I am a pickpocket, uh, because I am a thief, because I'm a pickpocketer,、Hi. um I am able to quickly move my hands, among other things. And I'm able to make things disappear. Perfect. Nice, nice. So the verb kese can conjugate the te form as ke, shi, te. So anything that ends with su is going to end with shte in Japanese. So kese, ke, shi, te. So ni seru has that seru there for. Ability to do something. This is a lot of times te bi se do means to kind of show somebody something, to do in front of somebody in this kind of concept, context.、Um, but it is this to show. Ni se do.、Um, so, d o r o b o wa m a j u s h i s h i no mado seki o keshte mi se do means to a thief can show somebody. We don't know who in this context.、Um, disappearing of a magical、uh, magician's magical stone. That's kind of what they're saying. So、uh, it's a bad sentence,、uh, but that's what misedu is used for.、Um, a thief, so a thief can show someone the disappearance of a stone. Yes. Of a magical、uh, stone. Yeah. So this is a weird sentence. It makes more sense if I had men no mai mono, men no mai no mono. Because they're saying, I could show you something disappearing, even though it's right before your eyes, would be、um, oh, okay. how that's used in the sentence. But I, I wanted to have just a quick sentence, but I'm like, it's kind of a weird sentence. It's grammatical, but sounds strange.、Um, so, what is the te form of kesu? Te form of kesu is keshiteru. I'm、perfect. sorry, no, keshite. Keshite. Perfect, perfect.、Keshite. Okay. So, koto, which you mentioned earlier, can mean like event type of things. That is correct. It does, it can have that kind of meaning. However, that's not the meaning that I am using、uh, that, that is occurring in this grammar point. So, sometimes this will be called、um, turning things into nouns, but that's not exactly like what it's doing. Basically, there's certain particles in Japanese that don't want to touch verbs. They're like, ew, don't make me do that. So, to, totally okay with touching verbs. It's like, you feel nice. I, I'm happy with that. However, wa, or the copula da, like in des, those guys do not want to touch verbs. They think verbs have kudis. So, because of that, either koto or no will have to be put in between them. For our purposes, we're only learning koto right now. Koto basically means in general, is what it's used for.、Um, so it's basically saying, I'm not saying talking about one specific occasion of somebody moving. I'm talking about moving in general. Ugoku, ugokasu koto.、Um, moving things in general. So it's a way to generalize things. I always call it an enveloping ter- term, like you're putting a blanket over like a large amount of things. This same meaning of koto can also go after nouns. So you may or may not have heard an anime, someone confess their love. They're never going to say, kimi ga suki. That is disgusting. How dare you say that? Instead, they say, kimi no koto. Well, normally their name, like sakara no koto or something,、um, then ga suki. 
because koto is basically saying everything about you i love rather than just saying uh i like your name or something weird it, it helps make it more generalizing multiple things one person has informed me that you can think of koto like a photo album full of multiple photos of something and no as a single photo so mm -hmm. So basically, it's just a way to generalize things. Um, can you do me a favor and read the sentence for me? Shubayaku ugo kasu koto wa muzushi. Ah, uh, muzu kashi. I don't. I forgot to write the ka there. Muzu kashi da. Hi. So da shouldn't it's be difficult. here. Hi. Exactly. Oh, muzu kashi. Hi. Um. Um. <laughs> swiftly move ah being able to swiftly move move things Hi. is difficult exactly so that'd be ugo ka seru so that would be probably more grammatically correct than su subayaku ugasu which is just to move something swiftly is difficult is what this says rather than to be able to which is the seru Hi. Hi. So and exactly. Earlier, you made a point that koto doesn't go after nouns, right? It Is that what you say? no, no. Uh, koto can go after nouns. So right here, kimi is a noun. It means um you. So kimi no koto means um I love suki you. Specifically, koto is a noun. Is what koto is and no. um we haven't learned this yet but subayaku ugokasu is actually a relative clause i see uh so say with like the no thing in a way no some of the time is also like a pronoun known with a relative clause or it's nonalizing um but koto this is basically saying the thing you know, the thing like events, things of moving swiftly. So the actions of moving swiftly are muzukashi. So that's that event, action, koto that we talked about. So theoretically, it is actually the same word uh, that you talked about earlier. So this right here means the events of kimi. So the things you do, the things... Everything you do basically is koto. So yeah, it's it's hard to wrap your hand around koto when you first start learning, but as you learn and see it a lot, it starts making more and more sense, basically. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people really struggle with koto and no, which um but it's not something that will really continue the struggle. If this was no, for example. We'd be talking about one specific event. So I'd be like, oh, it's really hard to move swiftly today, for example. It's like, kyo wa ukaseru koto ukaseru no wa muzukashi. Would be, um, you'd want to use that seru there. Oh, okay. So, so that, Very... that's when that no would be. So. Oh! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought I thought the Zoom just kicked me out, but it says uh, we have ten minutes left of our lesson. Is <laughs> what it told me. I was like panicked. I was like, did I forget again? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back to this point at some time in the future. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Ugo Kase. What do you think the te form of that is? Ugo Kashite. Yep. Shite. Perfect. You're correct. So this is shite. That is um, correct. If you want to sound a little bit more Japanese, you can kind of make that she less aggressive. And that's just because slurring occurs in all languages. It's kind of like if you said water, that's a little bit aggressive versus water. So at least at least in my accent, we do that D water, <laughs> not water. <laughs> so that's that, what that is in Japanese. So ugokashite. It's a lot easier to say than ugokashite. Okay. <laughs> so our next thing is datte. You've probably heard this a lot. Like someone might start something in anime and be like, datte, datte. And in that case, a lot of times it's translated as but. 
But um, right. at the end of a sentence, a lot of times even is a better way to translate it. Like, even I can do this would be um, how you can think about it. So can you do me a mm -hmm. favor and tell me what this is? Read this for me and tell me what you think it means. It's whatever Majutsu no Okay, so I, the stone, the magical stone of the magician, I can make that disappear as nice. well. Yes. Um. So the even part. Oh, I, I can know show. So yes, even <laughs> I can show you that I can make this the magician stone disappear so i can show you that i can do this i can do it right in front of you i can show you that want, want me to do it it's like you, you daring me Come, right. this, this okay. dare. I, I could do it i could do it that's it that's it even i can do it so so um so next verb is dekiru this is literally the word possible to do so sometimes when you talk, you want to conjugate it to be impossible. And other times you want to literally say the word, it's possible. So dekiru is what you use if you want to literally say the word possible. Um, right. And a way you can use it is just with te form. Te form plus dekiru. Um, can you do me a favor and read this sentence for me? I can make the things right in front of my eyes disappear. Perfect. Exactly. So how would you say the magicians can move their magical stone? You know two ways to do it. My goal is for you to use the decadu way. Though you can always show off and use the conjugated way. Hey, so first way is Maho, no, not Maho. You want um, Majutsushi. Oh. Majutsushi. Majutsushi wa Mado seki wo keste dekiru. Right, that'd be magicians can make their stone disappear. We'll just continue with the keste. How else could we say this? How else could we say can make can make it as a period you say it was an eru eru thing? So okay, so ma majitsu shiwa madoseki o kesh kesh oh so it's kesh. My the verb is kesu. Hi. Keseru? Keseru? Yep, exactly. So for all intents purposes, these two sentences are the same. The only real difference is preferences, really. Um, basically, this one sounds like you're literally saying the word, you know, I to it's to I could totally do this. It's possible for me to do this. This one right here feels a little bit more factual, is how I, I would describe that. Um, and in general, if you're having a sentence that you want to have multiple verbs in it, you're not going to have dekidu after every single verb. That gets a little bit excessive, right? <laughs> You wouldn't say it's possible right. for me to do this and possible for me to do that and possible like you don't you don't need to say the word possible over and over, but you probably do have to conjugate possibility over and over. So this one you can do multiple times. This one you should only do once per sentence. It's too dramatic otherwise. Okay, right. I'm gonna skip that. <laughs> okay, so let's go. This is actually the the actual sentence from the book you reached it hey. yes so are wa tsuri da kara te o subayaku ugokaseru shi me no mae no mono o keshite miseru koto datte dekiru hai oh okay so i i did notice i was able to read it a bit faster hai, <laughs> hai. before but um so he was saying that because I'm a pock I'm a pickpocketer, I'm able to move my hand swiftly and I'm able to make things disappear right in front of my eyes. 
oh, I, I can show it. Mm -hmm. I can show that I can make things disappear in front of my eyes. And even I, I can do that. Yep. It's so exactly. hard to translate it because it, it's, it's so opposite to the English way of putting things. Yeah, it's kind of, it's a pretty dramatic sentence. If it was a kind of a run on. So he basically, he basically say even I, I can, even I can show that I can make things disappear and move my hand quickly because I am a pickpocketer. Exactly. So yeah, in English, they said a pretty interesting sentence, which is, I have quick hands and I can make things disappear. So you see in English, pretty different as far as things. I have quick hands. Well, then I can move my hands swiftly. So it's, it's right. a pretty fun translation, this book. They kind of help keep the essence, but they don't really do like obnoxiously direct translation like Harry Potter does. <laughs> Harry Potter is known for being too direct for some of their translations. So sometimes people will make fun, like if you go on the Japanese side of things, they'll be like, what does this read? The curl your lips. Because that, that, that means like the sneer. <laughs> English speakers are like, yeah, he's sneering. And the Japanese are like, what does this mean? Oh, okay. Makes they could have said nyant, 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 what I would be the sneer in Japanese. <laughs> Hi. But yeah, that is where we're going to end for today. So 